Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up coverage of Sky Shines Bedlam. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I gave a sneak peek of this yesterday on stream. It released today on Steam. Eh, stream, Steam, yeah, no, okay. It is basically a mix and mashup of FTL and the Banner Saga, and I'll explain that a little bit more here in just a second. It is by, as you can see down here at the bottom right of the screen, Skyshine Games and Versus Evil, and it is run off of the actual Banner Saga, well, their engine. So, how is it mixed and mashup between those two games? They don't seem very similar or very alike. Well, that's true, but you have the FTL moving around from galaxy point to galaxy point. Here you would be on land, driving around in your giant tank village or city or whatever this would be considered your dozer, as it were. And you're trying to get from point A to point B, but there's a bunch of little stops in between and battles. And then when you go into battles, you're into a turn-based combat type battle scenario. So we're going to hop in and actually play. I'm going to actually play the intro as well. This, again, just released today on Steam. And I highly recommend it, guys. This is a game I've been looking forward to for quite some time. And I got it a little bit early yesterday, and I got to play around. And I've already spent over three hours playing it, and I'm, I'm pretty much hooked, guys. I'm addicted. I got all the way to the final boss of the game, and then I just didn't quite have enough oomph to take him out. So let's play the intro and see what that's all about. Centuries from now... Long after the barren age has passed, civilization prevails in the overcrowded metropolis of Byzantine. A technological marvel held prisoner by the twisted wastelands of Bedlam, the result of humanity's race to oblivion. A domain of chaos and endless perils. Ruthless marauders, rogue AI, Toxic mutants, deadly cyborgs. But there is new hope discovered in Bedlam. A mythical utopia called Aztec City. And a magnificent rolling fortress operated by a mysterious figure known only as the Mechanic. The expedition for Byzantine to be filled with danger. If you have the courage, attempt to survive this journey into Bedlam. And there you have it, folks. There you have it. I'm pretty excited, guys. I didn't actually get to see the intro, so we're going to start up a new run and get into it. And they said that they were going to unlock these or enable us to unlock these, but it is apparently not unlocked automatically. So we'll have to start off with the Bone Shaker. Which, as you see, it's got three, 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 all the way down the line. This is the crude oil. This precious black fluid keeps the dozer's mighty engines running. The higher rating means the greater fuel efficiency. So again, right down the middle, all the way across the board. Here's meat. It keeps the people fed. Again, food consumption rate is improved with the higher rating. The power cells. And this is uh, fewer power cells consumed during battle if you use the special abilities. And I'll get into all this stuff once we get into the game itself as well, folks. And then crew, battlefield injuries will send your crew members to the medical bay, uh, bay, not bay, but bay. A higher rating means your crew will recover from wounds more rapidly. So, again, straight down the middle, pretty much even, right? If you take a look, this one's got a, you know, even on the fuel, much better on the meat, really, really good on power cells, but terrible from injuries. Those would be the mutants. And then if we moved on to the Marauders, uh, they are terrible at fuel efficiency. They're not real great at food, they're not very good at power cells, and their crew is about average. So you would say, why would we want those guys? I'm sure their special abilities and things are actually probably quite crazy, and they probably make up for quite a bit. Alright, we'll move on to the Cyborgs. And the Cyborgs, really good at fuel efficiency. Uh, terrible at food, really good at power cells, and about average on the healing. And finally, we have the Rogue AI. They're great at fuel efficiency and food, they're average on power cells, and they don't do so well at healing. So, each of these different groups all have special, unique things about them, and we'll get into that when we get into the game. But for now, we're going to take a look. We have the Skyshine Distillery Weapon. Toxic byproducts of the dozer are transformed into projectiles of potent intoxicating liquid to cause immediate inebriation and violence in enemies. And injects a potent array of tissue regenerating nanonutrients for rapid crew recovery, the trauma top cocktail. And the blitzer screen, a reverse polarity spatial distortion shield can absorb or deflect incoming enemy attacks. 
Well, we're going to start off with the Bone Shaker, and we're going to go on a normal. There are the three different difficulty levels, as would be expected. And we're going to go bone right... Shaker. We're going to go right down the middle. The Bone Shaker. All right. So here we are. We are in Byzantine right now. We need to get all the way down to Aztec City, and there will be many, many plots along the way. Now, we get to kind of choose who we want to do battle with at the very beginning. Um, we don't necessarily have a direct path, so we're going to be kind of at the mercy of wherever the like checkpoints or the places will send us. But we have a thousand fuel, a thousand food, and we have 25 power. And we have a thousand human peoples, or crew if you will. And the fuel obviously when you move, like if we take a look here, it'll take us one day, so this is the actual day here. It'll take us one day, 35 fuel and 24 meat to travel to that point, and I believe all these points are exactly the same. Alright, if you take a look on the wonderful, wonderful map of death here, we'll see all these various little boxes and things. The crude oil, which would be like these spots, would have a very large benefit for us to go there if we were running low on fuel. The meat stores are obviously for meat, and there is one right there at Kretenbog, or Kretenbog maybe, um, power up there for the power supplies. I'm not sure what the equalizer is, I think that gives us an additional weapon for our dozer. There are elites that we'll run across and if we do combat with the elites you'll see them. There'll be these little portraits and they'll be in red. If we go there we have to fight a stronger than average or stronger than normal enemy and if we defeat them they actually will join our side and you kind of want them to do that. It's a really good thing to do especially early on in the game. And then Viscera is the nasty evil boss of the realm and he will be a pretty big problem as we go on, but we'll, we'll see all about that in the future. But for now, we have to choose where we want to head. The four different groups, and there's actually a few more things to talk about. Sorry guys, we're not ready to head out just yet. I know, you're excited, you want to see what's going on, but we're not quite ready yet. Alright, so there's four different groups. There's the Rogue AI, the Cyborgs, the Mutants, and the Marauders. The Marauders are pretty much just like regular humans. I mean... I, I can't recall if they had anything specifically amazing about them. I haven't fought a lot of Marauders. However, the mutants all start with uh, really low health. And it's pretty easy to kill them off early on. But every turn that you don't kill them off, they gain one health. So they get stronger and stronger. So if you're up against like 20 mutants, you're probably not going to win that fight. Because by the time you get to the last ones, they're going to be at like 30, 40 health. And you're going to have a real hard time dealing with them. The cyborgs are kind of the opposite. They start at uh, pretty decent health, and then they start to lose health over time. And I believe they might hit harder? I think they actually hit pretty hard as well. And then the rogue AI are even more annoying. They're like max health, max um, damage, you know, pretty much like what you would expect them to be normal, kind of like the marauders, except they have the ability to teleport wherever they want on the map. And that ability can completely wreck you. You'll see how the combat goes in just a little bit here. But that is a very, very annoying feature, and you should be kind of concerned and worried about having to go through any of the rogue AI areas. And there's actually quite a few of those areas on the map. The mutants are pretty tough to deal with as well, so... It is simply what it is. Alright, so we can take a look over here at our group of guys, and we'll come to this screen when we're ready to do battle, so I'm not going to focus on it right now. But this is basically your away team down here. And these are all the people you can choose to pull into the away team. But again, we're not ready for that yet. And then over here, it shows you all the cargo you have. And it shows you all the battlefield equalizers. These are like buffs or things that you can do for your humanoid uh, people, your army. And then you have the weapons that you can also fire out and do murderous things to the enemy with. Now, these all cost energy. See, these are all energy points. And we have 25 energy. Now, the problem with using the dozer weapons and the... Uh, quality control thingies there. What were they called again? Let's take a look. Uh, the equalizers. Using the equalizers. Um, they use up the power, but you also have the ability, if you click up here, to improve your entire squad and your dozer and such. Like meat consumption. You can actually lower the amount of food your people eat each day by researching that. You can also lower the amount of fuel you burn by researching that. I'm actually going to put one point into that. And I'm going to put one point into power cell efficiency right there. Now, it's not great, but it is simply what it is. That's what we're going to start with. And it looks like I might have enough to do more. Five power cells to increase uh, the healing. Sure, do that. And then what's this? Ten for that. 
I'm not sure we'll do one in each. So we won't have any special abilities that we can use for now, but hopefully we'll be able to find some of this stuff. Alright, well I want to get moving. I'm going to try to go maybe in like a path like this. Down this way and see if I can't get to the Aztec City. But there's no guarantee. So we're going to go to Half Knot and that's going to be where we start off at. So we're going to travel there. We can see the wonderful little uh, dozer there moving on out. The colossal dozer slowly trundles through the superstructure arteries of Byzantine. Escorted by law regulators and flanked by an army of prominent now beam broadcasters projecting the vehicle's impressive image across the surrounding Goliatron screens. Byzantine has been energized with excitement since Lazarus announced his plan to cross Bedlam seeking the mythical Aztec City. Although most citizens' involvement extends to simply wagering on the expedition's survival odds. The outer barricades part as the dozer begins its journey into the malevolent wastelands beyond the walls. Alright, and here we are. This is our first stop, and time to go. Look at all that pollution. Shortly after leaving Byzantine, the dozer approaches a large obstruction of scrap metal in the road. The crew disembarks to inspect the debris, or the debris, only to be suddenly surrounded by a group of sinister cyborgs. No! That vehicle is the snaz. We're gonna strip the gear and scrap the rest, but first you pure fleshers gots to go. Alright, well apparently they are very unhappy with us. Alright guys, I told you we'd come back to this, and we have, and let's remove all of our troops, because I would like to show you everything from scratch. And as you see here, we need a crew to actually go and do battle. They've decided to remove some of the extra bonuses. There used to be more bonuses down here. Actually, maybe not. Let's see. Yep, they did. So they don't ever want you to run with less than three. There's no benefit to running with less than three. They found that some people tried it, and it just was never worth it. So they always want you to run with at least three people. Um, if you run with three, you'll be able to get 2x the power, 2x the fuel, and 2x the meat for doing so. But it's, it's, it's kind of hard to do sometimes. If you run with four, uh, you, you won't get the 2x power, but you'll get the 2x of the others. So pretty, you know, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. So we'll move on past that. All right, so we have the Dead Eyes. Let's take a look at her. I'm not going to read their backstory, but I'm going to read what the Dead Eyes actually do. They are long-distance rifle experts with the lowest health and movement of the crew, but they also deal the greatest damage at the furthest distance. Protect these sharpshooters. So they're snipers, basically. And they do significantly large quantities of work. I mean, they just wreck face, okay? I've tried using some of the others to maybe see if the snipers really were overpowered, and they are, guys. They are. Uh, the frontliners, I like the idea, I like the concept, but they just do too little damage to make it worthwhile. We'll take a look at them right here. Frontliners are your most sturdy and agile fighters, able to dash directly into hand-to-hand -hand combat and inflict punishment as well as absorb it. They provide protection for other crew. Now, I think maybe one of the things I would like to see to make these guys a bit more viable is maybe being able to move and attack at the same time. I think that would actually make them really strong. Like, they're, they're pretty much like you send them in to die. You send them to block things and just get shot and absorb damage. They're kind of useless right now. But if they were able to move an attack, it still wouldn't be great, but it would definitely put them as a less useless character. But I suppose the reason they don't want to do that is because you get elite units eventually, and once you get elite units, they're actually pretty strong. So, eh, I don't know. I still think that might be something the developer may want to consider. Maybe it would be overpowered or broken, I'm not sure. Alright, we're going to move on to the gunslingers here. The pistol-packing gunslingers have a great balance of endurance, movement, and weapon damage. Eh, sort of. These hand cannon hotshots can also return fire automatically when attacked. Alright, so they usually do 3 damage, as it says right there. They have decent movement, they do medium damage, you know, all the stuff that he said. They just seem to lack quite a bit, and it's it's a little disappointing. And additionally, they said they, they return fire. They only do 1 damage. If they do 3 normally, they do 1 and return fire. And considering they only have 5 health... And finally, the trenchers, or the assault, or shotgunners, if you will. As the close close combat weapon specialist of the crew, the shotgun wielding trenchers develop develop. They deliver a whopping firepower when the enemy is near, but are much less effective at a distance. So they need to get kind of close, and then they blast them with a shotgun. And when they do, they knock the enemy away. So I'm gonna try to roll with three people this time, guys. I want to get some some bonuses right now. I'm gonna start off right. I'm gonna roll with one sniper. It's gonna be our gal pal here, Tarusa, and we're gonna go with. Um, Artema? Sure. Artema, and I think we're going to go with Leandra. 
So we're going to roll with those three and see what's up. You can also rename your characters if you want. I'm choosing not to this time, guys. There will be certain series and things that I will tell you guys, sign up and I'll do stuff, but this is not one of them. So just bear with the uh, default names. They're pretty good. I like them. All right, folks, let's get started into combat. Gunslingers seek retribution. All right, and here is the combat. You can zoom in a little bit if you're too far away, which I think we started off a little bit too far away. Now that guy's a guy's kind of a problem here. We're actually in a pretty crappy position, if I'm being honest here. Like I don't I don't like this at all. Like this is really bad. We're gonna have to try to run over here and hopefully deter the enemy from attacking. Okay, well that sort of worked. But not exactly. Jeez. Alright, we can move here and we can fire them. Right? And hopefully they'll go after our melee combatant here. Oh no, they're gonna... Okay. That worked out. So, here's how combat works, guys. Before we get too into things here. Here's how combat works. Um, every time it's your turn, you get to do two things. You can do two movement commands, which I did on the first one. I moved our sniper a little bit, and I moved this dude. Actually, I moved him twice. Sorry, I moved that guy twice. And then you can also do two attacks, like this guy had 10 health. I could shoot him twice and kill him off. Um, or I can move and then shoot, which is also probably what you're going to see the most, is a move and shoot. Right now, we're going to shoot first. We're going to ask questions later. No, we're not going to ask questions later, guys. We're going to grab up this power cell, actually. Power. And we're going to see what's next. All right, he's going to move in, and he's going to move over. Okay. And if I move up one, I will be within range. Now, here's the thing I don't like about the snipers at the very beginning, or the dead eye. They only have this very specific area that you can fire in. You can't fire outside that, obviously, but you can't fire anywhere inside of it either. It's only in that specific line. I think that's uh, five squares out. Or five tiles out, if you will. So that's kind of rough. But if you get three kills on any of your snipers, or your dead eyes, as it were, you will actually get an upgrade and become a veteran. And once you're a veteran, you actually can fire at five or four places, which opens up things a little bit for you. So it's not too, too bad. All right, we're going to take this guy down. Down he goes, and he is moving out here. We should probably get, yeah, I say we should probably get shot in the butt there, but... We should also be able to get this kill, which will enable us to hit veteran status. Veteran. Alright, the machine gods failed us, but not next time, chumbo. Alright, we got 2x, 2x, and 2x, baby. Yeah. Alright, so that was a pretty good battle. It could have gone a lot worse, could have gone a lot better. Uh, a lot of people don't seem super thrilled that you can only move two. They say, they're like, oh, well, you only have two actions per turn, so what's the point of bringing a larger crew? You will lose people in this game, guys. People will die. You are not going to be able to get from the beginning to the end without losing anyone. If you do, kudos to you. You're a much better player than I could probably ever even hope to be. But we're going to move on right now. Now, I'm still torn. I'd like to actually spend a little bit of time going around and exploring some of these little side missions. In fact, I'll do one right now. I'm going to go here, and we're going to break off and do a little point of interest. You can see our little uh, away vehicle coming out. As the crew explores the area, their attention is drawn by the noise of a sputtering motor. From over a nearby dune comes a rickety, tracked vehicle towing a small trailer filled with scrap. The operator stops and watches the crew. We can talk to the scrapper or attack. Well, I'd like to talk to him. Greetings, travelers. Pardons for the hesitation. Never knew the intentions out here, or you never know the intentions out here in the big chaos. Me, I'm just a harmless gatherer of the finest artifacts Bedlam has to offer. Well, it's mostly useless cruft, but the occasional treasure can be found. Don't suppose you got some fuel to spare? The old dust driver's here on fumes, but it'll take crude or fusion. Don't got much uh, o value in return, though I did find some sort of some sort o ancient math box buried deep out in the capacitor flats. Haggle. Uh, I don't really want to trade anything with you, buddy. I'm sorry. Ancient math box. That doesn't seem... Nah, we're just going to leave. I could attack him, but ah, I don't feel like being mean. Alright, so that was kind of a waste of our time. And a waste of our resources. Alright, so down here, guys. If you recall in FTL, you had that giant wave of stuff coming after you, and you always had to stay ahead of it. It's not exactly the same down here. The problem down here is the longer you take, the more days that pass, the more challenging the enemies get. 
So some people would say it would be worth it just to rush as fast as you can to the end, but you might miss out on a lot of cool stuff. So we'll see. Up ahead on the road, you can see a rickety motor cart towing a large trailer filled with various containers. Stop and investigate. The dozer comes to a halt and you disembark. The motor cart also stops and you are approached by the driver, an eccentric looking man with a peculiar equipment. Greetings to you, operator of the Grand Machine. I am an alchemist, a masterful manipulator of matter. Could I be of humble service to one of such obvious esteem? You've heard tales of these scorned practitioners of transmorgification, able to convert various substances into other useful materials using archaic black science, the same types of unstable procedures that contributed to the Baron Age and created the chaotic land of Bedlam so long ago. Let's accept it. Magnificent! You'll have no regrets, thus I declare I have the raw materials or raw elements in my stalls to catalyze a limited processes. Which of your materials would you like transformed? We can get meat to crude, crude to meat, power cells to crude, or passengers to crude. Let's melt down some of our passengers and turn them into fuel. I think that's a good idea. Give me mere moments and it is done. The dozer continues along the road with the newly transformed resources. Now we got 180 fuel and we murdered 75 passengers for it. I think that was a pretty good trade. So if you get to the end with no passengers, I think you lose the game. I'm not sure, because I've actually had no passengers and I was still going, but... Eh, we'll see. Um, the more passengers you have, the more food you eat, so having less, not necessarily a bad thing. We'll see, though. We'll see. Alright, guys and gals, this is what I was talking about, and this is where we'll break off the episode after this battle right here. This is one of the elites. This is going to be a battle... And we are going to do a battle with it. And if we defeat the guy, he will join our side. Ooh, Chunder Rock. Be giving you Morts de Belly O'Bile. Turn you Morts to the Meat Chowder. All right, we're going to be fighting the Meat Chowder Man. All right, unfortunately, you got wrecked. So we're going to throw you out of, of that area. We're going to bring in old Blueface here. We're going to probably need more than just one individual. We are going to bring our elite or our veteran uh, sniper. Probably going to bring Morgan as well. And I might just kind of, I don't know. Ah, we'll, we'll roll with four. You should be able to roll with four. Hopefully he doesn't have a whole giant retinue of enemies with him. If he does, it's going to be pretty net. Oh, it's just him by himself. All right, so that's okay. All right, guys, so here's the plan. We want to be able to shoot him in the face hole and make him die a horrible, awful, burning, painful, agonizing death. That's the plan, the goal, the hope, the dream. He can move three squares up. So that's one, two, so he can move up to here. So what we want to do is be able to get to that point. I'm going to move this guy behind cover because he's probably going to soak some of the damage. And as much as I would like to, I don't think I can move. All right, so we're going to have to move here. And we're going to hope that we can get a shot on him. I don't think we can yet, but if we move again, we should be able to. So I'm going to move out to here. It's not going to work, is it? No, it's not. So chances are he's going to move here and then fire on our boy. So what I'm going to do is fall back. And I'm going to bring our other sniper over as well. And we're going to hope that this works out. Oh, he can attack them. Oh, and he got through right away. That's not great. And no, we are not in the right position for this. Alright. So what we need to do now is probably move him up there. And it looks like we're going to be okay if we're here. And we'll move back to here, I guess? And we'll see. Alright, he just got a whole bunch of nasty absorbed into him. It's not great. And I am just miscalculating this like a fiend, guys. Alright, we're going to take a shot there. Oh, we missed because he was ducking. Alright, so he's down. So this is not going super well. But, if we can land this next shot, we will win it. And there it is. Yeah, headshot. Alright, by Terragog's Tangled Tales, you morts got the mox. Yeah, we do. Alright, so we lost two guys there. It wasn't fantastic. You are going to lose people, guys. Don't let it worry you too, too much. But we did manage it. We didn't lose either of our snipers. Granted, he has no kills yet, or she has no kills yet. It's fine. And we did manage to pull him in. Chunderrock got the hungries after all this fight. Chunderrock, come with you, Morts, and replenish his belly. Alright. 
Cheddar Rock has joined the Dozer Crew. Very, very cool. And I believe, guys and gals, that is going to be where we break off this episode. Before we do, I'm going to show you guys we now have Chunder Rock here. He is a trencher. So he behaves much like them, but he is far, far, far more powerful. You see he does 13, or he has 13 health, he does 8 damage, a range of 1 to 3, a move of 3. These guys have a move of 5, so they move a bit further, but they only have a range of 1 to 2. Again, he has 1 to 3. And 6 health versus the 13. And of course the 8 damage versus the 4. So getting elites, pretty good idea. You definitely want to get elites. Try to keep them alive, try to get them kills, level them up as well. That's always going to be the play, the plan, the goal, the hope, the dream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, first episode. Again, I don't think it's going to last like 10, 20, 30 episodes. If it does, I don't know what in the world I've been doing, but it shouldn't last that long. But uh, I'd say by the end of the next episode, there's a pretty good chance we'll be pretty close to Aztec City, if not in it. And then if we manage to do that, which I can't guarantee we will, but if we do manage to do that, then we will come back our way back up this way, back to Byzantine from there. And if we manage that, we'll actually beat the game. But chances are I'll die long before then because this game is brutal and super, super challenging. Anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will be back tomorrow with the next episode, the next installment of Sky Shines Bedlam. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.